Good evening and welcome to Legal Tech Live. I'm your host, Nick Richwain, and my guest tonight is Everett Crossland. Everett is the founder of Sunset Health or Sunset.health is the website. It is an app about lawyer, legal professional, I should say. I've been saying lawyer specific, but I guess it's legal professional, yeah. isolation and burnout. And we're going to be talking a little bit about well-being tonight. Everett, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for reaching out. We had a nice chat. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, you bet. And, and thanks so much uh, for having us on here. And, and yeah, I'm a, I'm a co-founder of Sunset Health, um, as well as the, a uh, chief business advisor. Um, and really what the uh, company is focused on is, is helping uh, reduce, mitigate, and manage uh, burnout for, um, for uh, individuals in the legal profession, as well as others in you know, that billable hour, high, high performing type of uh, profession. My background is in digital medicine in particular, um, where I've uh, worked for a number of companies that uh, have, where I've commercialized and launched um, digital therapeutics for everything from substance use disorder, opioid use disorder. Um, my day job is at Applied VR, where I uh, work as a senior vice president of commercial there on a virtual reality therapeutic in chronic pain and acute pain. Um, and so at Sunset Health, the, the team is really focused on marrying up uh, the, you know, the a digital medicine approach to what we look at it as, as a mental health crisis in the legal field, and that is employee burnout or occupational burnout. Um, happy to kind of talk further about that, but yeah, uh, I think this talking. is a, I think it's a, a great, uh, there's certainly been a lot of talk about uh, uh, burnout and isolation and mental health issues in the legal profession recently, uh, or it, it seems to have been growing more, re more recently, it seems to maybe have found a critical mass of people finally taking it serious. So I think it's a, a really excellent uh, app that you guys have here for that. Tell me a little bit, uh, this is very much a pro startup, pro founder show. Tell me a little bit about how you came to, from the digital health side, how did you decide to move into the, the legal side, uh, legal health side? You know, it's it's very much by design. I, you know, my my background. I I did go to law school uh, and graduated, uh, surprisingly. But um, I went straight out of law school into the pharmaceutical industry. Um, yet, you know, main, maintained and continue to maintain uh, close contact with a lot of my colleagues across the legal industry, and um, and I've watched uh, watched them as well as a couple of other uh, former colleagues in finance and healthcare really struggle uh, with the high pressure environment that they all have to exist in. And also I, I really identify with this kind of self-selection that happens in the legal field where, you know, we really, um, we're, we, we self-select into law school as, as a competitive bunch and then we kind of maintain that throughout our career. And you talk to practicing lawyers and they wear burnout as a badge. And it's mm -hmm. part of that kind of self-selection of competition. It's part of that just culture of, of the legal field. There are so many kind of layers of, of uh, factors that breed burnout in this field. And it's um, in one sense, it's fascinating in another sense, you know, we, I felt like over time, what, what I and, and the, I know my co-founders uh, felt the same way that, um, that over time we've developed this expertise in digital medicine and that what we were looking at in that field, in this field of, of the legal profession, in the field of healthcare and in the field of uh, finance, that we were really seeing a lot of, a lot of individuals um, who were dealing with something that requires a digital medicine intervention, or at least a medicinal intervention. And, and um, 
And so we felt like, you know, why not take our backgrounds and try to do some good here, uh, recognizing that there's a real need. And then, of course, there's a market opportunity as well. Um, when you talk about billable hours and things like that, real, re there's a real opportunity to measure the, the effect of, uh, that we can have on a, on a firm. And tell me about that. Tell me or tell us, uh, our uh, former guest and friend of the show, Adam Kerpelman's here in the room with us watching as well. And Adam, if you have any questions, please uh, let us know. Um, if you tell me how you measure measure burnout just on a general generally speaking how do you measure that not yeah. necessarily for legal professionals but how for any professional do you measure that yeah yeah so um i mean burnout has been classified by the world health organization as a workplace phenomenon um, okay. and they classified uh classified it in the diagnostic uh, criteria that physicians use um, for to, to classify any diagnosis. So you look at the current um, diagnostic, diagnostic criteria and it's the ICD-10. Um, burnout is described in the ICD-10. It's further described in the upcoming ICD-11. And in that description, what, and, and this is built by physicians, right? They right. inform this through evidence. What, what they're describing is a uh, condition that has basically three different dimensions. And those, those dimensions are you know, cynicism, uh, diminishing sense of self-efficacy, or that sense that no matter what I do, I can't do a good job and I can't meet my goals, which is very important in the, in, in prevalent in the legal field. And then the third is exhaustion. And when we think about burnout, I think everybody thinks exhaustion, fatigue. Yeah, absolutely. That's part of it but we're able to measure um, the presentation, each individual's presentation of burnout. And so you might present with exhaustion and cynicism. Um, and, and that cynicism might come across as not really buying into the values of your job and what you're creating um, on a daily basis and what that translates to is you feel like you're not spending your life and your career in a valuable way, and that contributes to burnout. What I may present as present, I, I probably would present as exhaustion and you know that diminishing sense of self-efficacy. And so we're able to kind of measure it in that way in very much kind of psychiatric terms. Um, and at the same time, you can measure, there's an assessment tool actually deployed by the American Medical Association that allows us to measure severity. So mild, moderate, severe. Um, and that, again, it's just like any spectrum type of psychiatric condition, we're able to determine, you know, how burned out are you? And that's a likelihood and risk of kind of cratering into that place where you're not able to be productive at all. You're depressed, anxious, stressed, and fatigued. And, and so this is in, so Sunset Health, the app is aimed at the employers. Yes. There's a benefit here to the employers having, uh, to them subscribing and using this for employees. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, so it's, it's a, a benefit to employees and employees in that we're able to tell an employee you know, look out, like based off of this validated assessment, you're trending towards a real problematic area. And, you know, you may not, you may not feel it because it's a boil the frog type of scenario, right? We, you know, we work, work 10 hours uh, every day for six days. The next week we work 12 hours. The next week we work 14. And suddenly we're working 14, 15 hours a day, month over month over month. And, we're not thinking anything about it. We've adapted, our sleep schedules have adapted, and then it starts to catch up with us. We can tell that employee before that starts to happen, right? And, um, and then we can equip them with the therapeutic tools, tasks, and micro goals that can help them better manage that and, and help them really bring their, their burnout down when I talk about severe, moderate, mild, and we can take somebody from severe down to mild. It takes time. 
and it takes them putting in a little bit of work, um, but, uh, but it can be done. All of that translates to value for an employer, right? Uh, that's, that's from a law firm perspective, you know, the ABA is, has estimated that the loss of an associate, I think these numbers are tossed around quite a bit, but the loss of an associate can cost 200000 to $500,000, right? And so, in upwards of 44 to 50% of associates leave before their third year. And these are law firms that are training everybody else as lawyers, right? Mm. A key reason they're leaving is that burnout. And so those are real dollars that we can help employers, specifically in this case, law firms, save. If we're able to help somebody extend kind of the, the, the longevity of an associate um, beyond the third year into the, and help them you know, go from being a junior associate to a mid-level and help them really believe in the, that their law firm cares about them, you know, and that they care about their well-being and that they're really doing something about it. That's interesting. So can you give us, do you know any of this data? It sounds like you do. Uh, and if you don't, just we can move on. No big deal. But so if somebody gets to that burnout, that severe burnout, what are some of the conditions of that? Are we talking now we're in depression? Now we're in, sure. uh, what are the, what are the, what stems from that severe burnout? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, you see, I mean, burnout s- kind of stands upstream from depression, anxiety. Um, we know that substance use disorder is a uh, is highly prevalent in uh, the legal field. You know, lawyers struggle with depression at 3.6 times the, the rate of the general population, right? I mean... Mm-hmm. That's, that's because of, in no small part, that's because of burnout and the, the high pressure that, that they feel. They struggle with anxiety at about twice the general population. Again, these are, you know, I, these are all conditions that are just downstream from, from burnout, right? Mm-hmm. And um, it's, it's a, and it, you know, it, and it's interesting because I, I talk to chief people officers, chief human resource officers all the time of law firms, right? And, and um, these are really nice people that, uh, that are caught in this interesting industry where we're in a billable hour scenario for the most part, right? Mm-hmm. And, and some law firms recognize that, that if you're in a billable hour or it's, like, it's not even billable hour, right? It's billable six minute increments. Mm-hmm. If you're in that, if, if you're in that industry, I think inherently you're going to push yourself more, mm-hmm. you're going to push yourself to to the to the brink, right? Yeah, and because not only are those billable six minute increments, but there's usually a minimum that you're supposed <laughs> yeah. to meet a yeah. year. Well, and you know, it, it, and it's really interesting that kind of getting back to that self selection. You know, lawyers do this thing where they go, "Yeah, I'm going to hit my 2050, right? I'm going to hit my 2050 billable hours this year." Um, but not only that, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to do more than that. Mm-hmm. And they have their own personal goal, even though like the law firm that they work for has already set an extraordinary goal for them. Right. Um, and, and yet they go, no, I'm going to do more than that because it's this, this, you know, this mentality that we, um, that we kind of self-select for at the same time. Uh, and when surveyed about 80% of attorneys say that work-life balance, I think this is a really interesting statistic, that 80% of of attorneys say that work-life balance is a measure of uh, their success. So it's almost like if I can achieve work-life balance, it's that it's almost like a a vacation home. That means I've made it. Right. Because I'm at that level where I can actually say, I can actually help manage my time a little bit more, right? Um, and so that's, and so think about them and what that does. That means that just like that second home, that nice car you're working towards out in the future, that means between now and then you're killing yourself so that you can have work-life balance. Yeah. It's, 
or you're killing yourself to I'm successful in my work and I'm successful at home and those are pulling you apart. And well, yeah. Because I've seen a lot of people do that as well. Yeah, and like it's the, I, you know, it's that mentality of I can have it all. And, um, and you know what, that's, it's an interesting, um, it's an interesting phenomenon that burnout because you do, you do have this mentality where it's like, I can have it all, you know, I'm burning the, the candle at both ends. No, no big deal though. I can do it and you do it and you do it and you do it. And then you fall off a cliff. Right. So it's like, it's, it is this kind of boil the frog from a mentality perspective, but one day your body and mind just, that's it. And what in, in how it presents itself is like simple things like, uh, I've got a stack of emails that are simple emails and I can't get to them. I just can't bring myself to answer those emails. Right. Um, and even though I'm killing it on a, uh, on a big project that has a lot of exposure, but like, um, the other things that should be easy to knock out because I'm so exhausted, I'm so burned out. I, I can't do that. I just don't have a mind space for it. It sounds so much like depression where people say, when I was depressed, it was a monumental task for me just to get out of bed. Sure. Right? Sure. Yep. That's, that's what this feels like, but in the workplace. Right. So Interesting. So, so how does the app work then? You sell it to the employer and yep. they encourage people to download it. How, how do you onboard the actual user so that you can intervene before sure. this burnout occurs? Yeah. Yeah. So we, we sell it to employers, law firms. Um, we're, you know, we're, we're selling to a, a diver, diversity of uh, employers at this time. Okay. Um, and, but uh, with a focus in, in legal, um, but we sell it to the, essentially the benefits and HR and chief people officer uh, group in a law firm. And then we do a rollout with, uh, with that group to um, to the either the entire firm or to an office to you know like the office in New York or the office in DC or whatever mm -hmm. a metropolitan area where they would they tend to like to pilot it um, and, and make sure that it's actually going to achieve the the goals that we claim that it can achieve and then um, once we demonstrate that there's value there they tend to roll it out and um, but it's really rolled out as a benefit, right? It's there's an, an internal communications push of saying, hey, burnout is an issue. We as a firm care about your burnout. We want you to participate in this program. So it's a Sunset Health program and there's an app to go along with it. The employees uh, download it and they start to use it. The first thing that you do in the app is you take that assessment. And so what we're able to do immediately in an aggregated, de-identified way, so we're not identifying individuals, but we're able to tell law firms, you know, what their baseline burnout level is. And we're able to tell them that, you know, if it's used across multiple offices, which offices are struggling, you know, is Chicago, is Chicago uh, struggling with burnout more than New York or what have you? Drilling down from there, we're able to say mergers and acquisitions is really struggling with burnout. And it's the, the flavor of burnout is exhaustion, whereas, you know, government compliance is cynicism. Um, and, and then we can recommend interventions that are outside of our app. We can recommend interventions like if it's exhaustion, you know, dial it back and, and uh, provide every third Friday afternoon off or, or uh, block employees and, you know, block employees from coming in on Sundays, tell you know, encourage them not to come in on Sundays for the next six months, be very proactive about that. Um, we can recommend interventions and we can do that for certain teams and practices because right. we can see it at that level, still de-identified though. So, yeah. And I was going to say, is there anything when you're in the app as the actual employee, uh, is there anything in the app as the actual employee? And it tells me right then and there, you know, you're looking at these, you are suffering burnout and you 100%. should 
Yeah. 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 You may need to cert, yeah. seek some sort of employee assistance or uh, give me any recommendations as the employee. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, it, um, so you take that assessment, it, it will show you in a very, you know, kind of pretty visualized manner, an elegant manner where you, where you score. Right. And, um, and then over time you can keep checking in on that. So you can see, am I improving? Uh, is, is this helping? And there's a lot of literature about that visualization continuing to help people engage and be motivated in getting better. Um, and it, and it works great for people who are, who are competitive, uh, because they like to see a, you know, a leaderboard or a scoreboard. And sure, it's uh, like the health app, uh, counting yeah. your steps or yeah, exactly. counting your heart rate and your exactly. Fitbit. Yeah, that's a good point. You know, we haven't done a, a burnout competition yet, I, or a reduction <laughs> competition. That might go against the principles of what we're trying to accomplish, but yeah. you could see a world where that might happen. So. Sure, sure. Um, but it's true. I mean, all right, I want to see if I want to, okay, I need to bring my burnout down or my isolation down. Yeah. Uh, similar to I've got to get the heart rate up or I've got to get the steps up, a similar yeah. kind of idea. Totally, totally. I mean, it's, it's you know, this is uh, true health, just like any any other, um, any other intervention, you know, that, uh, that you are trying to, trying to spread here and disseminate. Um, you know, what's nice too, is that we're able to show seasonality. Um, we're, we're a relatively new, um, relatively new company. So what the seasonality that we show now is based off of, um, you know, industry averages, but, um, but over time, as we, as we, maintain our book of business what we'll be able to show a given firm is you know last year in q4 your m a team um started to burn out and that's that's kind of typical right m a like there's their uh business really picks up there and in, <clears throat> in late q3 q4 and they just work all cr kinds of crazy hours and everything um and but we're able to show well, last year you you know your M and A team was highly highly burned out. This year you did better, so you know and and we're also able to say you know last you know, we're able to get in front of that law firm and say, hey look it's Q two, late Q two or early Q three, you know last year your M and A team started to burn out about this time. Let's get in front of it and it helped and we're able to measure that in a very dynamic and consistent manner. That's very interesting. Uh, and, and I guess my next question will be, and some of this uh, I imagine you, you may want to answer and some you may not, and that's fine, is what's the adoption been like? You guys are relatively new. Mm -hmm. um, how's, how's the uh, rollout gone? Yeah, it's gone well. I mean, you know, uh, the, so there, there, the, it's interesting. There, there are two kind of forms of adoption, right? Um, there's that getting your first customer, sure. um, which is getting out of the gate is always the toughest. Well, it's one of the toughest things. And right. That's been, uh, that was, that was difficult. Um, but I, I don't think any more difficult than, you know, what you, what you see anywhere else with any other startup. Um, I will say the legal world can, is a bit clubby, right? That like getting that first customer in the legal world was so critical because there's always this like, well, who else is using you? And that's, mm -hmm. that's true in any business, but like, um, but especially in the legal business where, you know, it's who else is using you and, and, and then, but then from there, what we found is, is that there's a, um, a very quick, cause there is so much churn. There's this very quick, like, Hey, I'll, uh, you know, I was using you guys at XYZ firm, you know, and now I want to, I I've moved to this new firm and, and let me talk to my HR department. I loved what you guys were doing, mm. you know, and kind of bringing us to the new firm. Um, that, that one is in the works, but, uh, <laughs> but, that, but that's nice. Uh, if yeah. they, if somebody really likes it and wants to bring that, you're starting to work on your network effect there. Totally. Totally. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, um, I, I think the question about adoption is it's gone, uh, it's gone well. It's gone quite well. Burnout is, 
is definitely top of mind right now. Um, yeah. with COVID isolation has driven a ton of burnout. You know, I, the, the outreach that we send out has a great conversion. Um, there's been some hiccups as far as like discretionary funding and everything during COVID, mm -hmm. um, but that's a challenge for everybody. What we have seen though, is that when businesses do sign us, sign us up, the take rate has been well above average. And, um, and I think that, you know, within the employee base, and I think that the reason for that is one, everybody seems to deal with burnout on some level. There's, there's not, I mean, burnout, they say about 65, or the, the data is about 65% of employees report, uh, report burnout in seeking help for burnout. Mm -hmm. um, the, so, I mean, that's, that's bigger than diabetes, right? Um, so we, we would, relative to that, we would expect our take rate to be pretty high. Um, but even so, it's been, high, it's been higher than I expected. And I think that in large part, that's, you know, that's COVID making people just really feel burned out. Right. Mm -hmm. when, when you say your take rate, does that mean people taking the, the qu quiz? Is that what you're talking about? Oh, no, I, I mean, so tell, tell me about that. I want to see if I'm understanding that correctly. And it's, so audience. yeah, take, take rate, it would be like the percent of employees that actually use the product when it's made available. Yeah. Okay. I'm making sure I'm understanding that correctly. Yeah. And so you've noticed during COVID that that has been uh, uh, actually above average. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's the, that take rate has been um, has been well above average because, and I do. I think it's just because we we're all feeling burned out, even though you probably feel burned out quite a bit. There's just not that camaraderie to alleviate some of it and things like that. You know, right? You, we're all just kind of stewing in our burnout right now. <laughs> right. Right. Uh, just uh, as a FYI for for those listening now and in, in the audio only version. Uh, and Phil, thanks for being here. Glad you're here. If you have any questions for Everett, please let us know. Uh, and Adam as well. Uh, Everett and I talked about, we talked about two months ago at the beginning of this, uh, the, and, yeah. and we didn't know where it was going to go. It was the very beginning. And and I did take, I took about a three week break from the show. Uh, so that was my, uh, and I noticed that I was already bored because then I was stuck at home. And once work ended for the day, I'm just stuck there without anything to do. So yeah. uh, there's a lot of isolation. Uh, and it's interesting that, that you have seen some, some, which may have been, you know, uh, not, not wishing it on anybody, but uh, may have been good for the adoption uh, of people willing to uh, reach out, knowing that mental health is an issue right now. Um, yeah. So you said something that may be the first time in 86 episodes uh, that I really wanted to hone in on there. It, it sounded like your experience selling in legal has not been uh, the same as uh, 85 other people that are 85 other episodes it sounded like you it sounded like the sales cycle was shorter than expected is that because of your experience in uh, healthcare with longer sales cycles or are you <laughs> noticing a long sales cycle as well in legal uh yeah I think you know um, yeah I come from a place where like sales cycles are 12 18 and 24 months right okay um, all right and, and so um i you know law firms in large businesses there's a consensus sale that has to happen um there's the red lining and and the negotiations and always somebody who kind of drops in out of nowhere who uh <clears throat> was always kind of lurking in the background somehow that all still happens um, and, uh, but yeah, it's a little bit quicker than healthcare in that regard. Um, Interesting. I, I guess what a perspective. Relative. Yeah. What it's all kind of relative, right? Right. Um, I will, I'll say this, um, and I, yeah, I kind of said it a moment, um, a few moments ago, uh, my experience in healthcare, it's interesting. Like 
the access that we we had and have in healthcare is um, is actually greater than the access than that I've experienced in legal. Like the you know the the ability to kind of get in and and actually pitch and present mm. um, in uh, the legal world has been um, has been more challenging than it is. You know, I can go uh, sell to Cleveland Clinic easier than I can to uh, some of these law firms. And is you know, so the foot in the door is yeah. is harder scheduling because sure. I, I I mean my experience in the medical world I I've sat in my doctor's office yeah and seen the salesperson yeah. sitting there as well ready to go in ready yeah. to make their pitch yeah. uh, so what's the pitch been like in in law and big law yeah I mean it's uh, not too far afield from that okay. um, but. You know, it's kind of talking, getting in with the right people. The challenge is this, <clears throat> too, that HR knows that they've got a problem. They, they already know this, right? There's not, we're not telling them that. Yeah. You know, we're not shocking anybody by saying, hey. Yeah, the people. studies have been done for a while now. Yeah, that your yeah. people are burned out, right? They know that. Um, the, the, the challenge for the people in HR is, is they are, they're basically saying, we are, we are looking for tools, um, but we're having to balance this between the rest of the executive board who is looking at billable hours going up and down and client flow and deal flow and things like that. And so we don't, we can't have anything be a distraction. And then secondarily, you, you just like any sales cycle, you got to find that champion, right? That, that the actual, practice leader who's willing to take the time to uh to implement this with their team and that is really tough because nobody has the time you know right yeah. and it is amazing because like i've sold into the emergency departments and emergency department physicians at least take a pitch going down the hallway <laughs> you know right but, but like a practice the practice lead for m a or whomever they they don't have that time like i i i get people i get people on the phone at 7 a.m when they're driving into the office now they're not mm. driving into the office right now but you know that's right that's when i was getting people and i and i and it's interesting i'm getting people on the phone a little bit more with covid but in some instances i feel like it's less because lawyers are instead of they don't have that free time in the car and they're just working it they're just mm -hmm. they're just billing that time instead of instead of commuting right um and i don't blame them i mean i get it um but it also means that like there's a bandwidth challenge for a for somebody trying to bring in a new technology or new innovation um and i know a lot of legal tech today is you know, is almost sold into like IT and things like in, in those departments. Yeah. And they're a little bit built for that. They're, right. they're, kind of, they're built a little bit more, a little bit easy for that easier access for sales. HR um, for us is not as right. not IT, you know, it's a little tougher. Yeah, that's interesting. And it's also the reason I, I wanted to have you on the show is because this is not one of the types of tech that we've covered yeah. before. Yeah. Uh, so that is really interesting. Now you're right, IT departments would be a little bit more uh, used to this kind of uh, the pitches and, and trying to find the right person and those things in HR is, is HR at a, at a large law firm, HR have any buying capability or does it then have to go into, we have to have our chief information officer on for this, or we have to have managing partner sign or. Yeah. I mean, it varies from firm to firm, but yeah. absolutely uh, more, especially more and more, I, I think HR is going to have more buying power in our short uh, time in existence. Um, you know, I, I've seen HR have, have a good budget. I will say every time I get a practice lead who says, yeah, I love it. I, I know my team needs this. I, but they go, I got to go take, talk to HR because I don't have budget for this, but they do. Right. And, and then sometimes the budget will come from 
the chief information officer or it comes from somewhere else. But HR for the most part has it. Um, interesting, like I've seen like the knowledge management people sometimes mm -hmm. have, have the budget, interestingly. But interesting. I think some of that's just overlap. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, very interesting. And so what is, you, you've already gone to market, you're, you're in the market. What is your growth? Are you guys out there seeking funding? Are you self-funded? How is that all working for you? Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, always seeking funding in one respect. <laughs> <laughs> uh, CEO would probably uh, not appreciate if I didn't say that, but um sure. But, you know, I, the team has actually been um, really diligent about kind of growing this organically, um, pivoting into areas opportunistically. And so um, beyond just the funding question, what we're, what we're trying to do is, is really build that network, like you said, that network in large, medium, and even some small firms where, um, I think once we're in and once we really show that value, we can become just the preferred partner, um, when it, the preferred wellness partner for these law firms. Because, you know, we start with burnout, but like I said, we're upstream from so many other conditions. Yeah, and I, I meant, meant to ask that earlier when we were on that subject. Do you plan uh, onboard features for other conditions in the future? It, it, absolutely part of the roadmap, right? Oh, um, and you know, we we were somewhat strategic and also somewhat aspirational in starting with burnout. We mm -hmm. wanted to do, it, you know, we all come from companies kind of where I started, where we focused on specific verticals, right? Specific disease states like pain, specific uh, conditions like substance use disorder. And aspirationally, what we thought was the most powerful uh, opportunity and best way to spend our time is if we can be upstream from all these things, um, we can move the needle on multiple health conditions at one time. And we yeah. thought that we, we really are motivated by that too. That's outstanding. Is there anything we're hitting about the 40 minute mark? And I know you're on the East coast. So I want to keep you up and away from the family all night. Yeah. Uh, I appreciate that. Anything we haven't uh, covered that you'd like to have covered? Um, no, not necessarily. I mean, I, you know, uh, just if I can do a call to action as we close up, I'm happy to do that too. Yeah, please do. Um, but, uh, but no, I, I really appreciate the discussion. I think, you know, for all the, I, there's so much discussion out there about the impact of burnout. And there's so much uh, attention on mental health right now. And I think, um, you know, for us, we, we're trying to do our part. We recognize that there are multiple ways to, to crack this. Um, and we think that we coexist in, you know, within uh, a suite of, of solutions. And so I would just say, you know, when I, when I talk to people and they say, yeah, well, you know, we've got massage therapists that come in every Thursday. So we're good. Um, you know, I think that we need to think about our employees and I know that a lot of people do, but think about our employees in a really holistic manner in that, you know, we help them uh, in all sorts of ways. We help them in financial wellness. We help them uh, with physical wellness through gym memberships and things like that. And, um, and I think mental wellness can, if, if focused on, if only focused on productivity and engagement, we're missing the mark, right? We have to fix that underlying thing, that underlying mentality, that underlying driver. And for us, we see that as, as burnout. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I think, you know, we can, we can help a lot of people. So the burnout essentially being, we're, all right, if we can prevent something here, we can prevent it from snowballing. Well, you can prevent it from snowballing and you'll, you'll improve engagement. You'll right. improve productivity. Don't skip over the burnout though, just to say, hey, how do we, let's do, let's do an engagement survey and then do a few things. 
You're right. missing the point. You're just yeah. putting a Band-Aid on it. Yeah. You know, I like that. Yeah. Excellent. So where can uh, our listeners and viewers find you and get in touch? Yeah. So uh, sunset.health will lead you uh, to a landing page where if you wanted to, you could go and try the, the app, download the app from the uh, Apple store. Um, there's a link there on our webpage. And then in addition to that, you can click on an employer link and it'll give you some of the stats I think that I've rattled off and the costs, but it'll also allow uh, us to get in touch. And that's right there on sunset.health. Excellent. All right. So our guest tonight was Everett Crossland, one of the co-founders of Sunset Health. Stay tuned next week, episode 87, we will have Justice Text. Just text. One of the two. I'm sorry. And I have to check that. Stay tuned next week. Some really cool people in the justice tech space. So, and, and a very similar name to justice tech. So stay tuned for that. <laughs> that was a mouthful to end on tonight. Everett, don't disappear. Thank you for being a guest. And uh, I'll talk to you when we're done here. Thank You're you, right. everybody. Thanks, Phil. Thanks, Adam. Talk to you guys soon. Thanks.